to me, after Pac and Big, I look at it like this. Most of the people that people look up to, I look at it, if you came after Pac and Big died, I can look at you and say, oh, you from they tree. Anything after Big, anything after Big, you from Big Tree. You look over here, Jay-Z from Big Tree. 50 Cent from Pac Tree. Wow. Yeah, I, I can see that. See mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, I can see that. Like, no disrespect. Yeah, I'm no, just no, no, saying no. that what people got to understand is Gippy walked the earth with these people. So at the end of the day, I don't care what they created out here in the world for people to understand the intake. I'm talking about when you was dead then and that. Hey, man, when them giants walked the world, I didn't know you. I didn't know your name. <laughs> talk that talk, man. Yo. I mean, that's yo, like, and it's get, no you being real humble, but you talking that talk. Like, like, I, I, just saying, I ain't and, even know your name. And, and, and that's, that's, what, that's why people got on. The fastest growing podcast up in the world right now. You know. Say word. Only fans, real estate, talking in fashion. Let them know what's happening. Say word. On and off the court, in the field with the sports. Let them know what's up. Say word. The conversation is active from movies to action. It's the main attraction. Yo, another episode of the world's fastest growing podcast. We in Atlanta. When you think about Atlanta hip hop, you think about Goody Mob. I don't even know. I don't even know how to even give you an introduction. So many stories, so many iconic moments. You know what I'm saying? Got to give you your flowers while we here, man. You like you really impact the culture. My guy, Big Gip on the check in. How's it going today? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's going, oh. it's going good, King. Word up. Let me introduce Fancy, co-host for today. How's everything? Excellent, excellent. Snap awesome your fingers. Vibe. We got to do something. <laughs> I'm here checking in. Yo, Gip, man. There's so many iconic stories. I really don't even know where to start from. Um, we can start from East Point, Atlanta, mm -hmm. the culture. Let's talk about it. Oh man, how did Gip get into hip hop? Gip got into hip hop, uh, introduced to hip hop um, by Ray Murray, who was a member of Organized Noise. He moved to my neighborhood. I was in middle school, seventh grade, eighth grade, I think, uh, Paul D. West. Um, and this guy moved from the West End, Sylvan, Catherwood, you know, and he brought this thing called hip hop. Um, he was the first person that showed me my first drum machine, or, you know, started showing me the different artists that he felt like were the heroes to the culture, you know, like the last poets, you know, and then we started going to KRS-One, um, and a lot of the, 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 the originators, I say, the architects of the whole thing, he started just showing me these are the things, and this is how you follow it. From there, um, I got a, I took an interest in the music, but at the same time in my neighborhood, it was a lady named Jean Kahn. Jean Kahn was a soul singer from the 70s, and she went to Washington High School. Well, during my middle school years, you know, her son, his name was Joseph Kahn, he started taking me over to his house. Wow. I started meeting his mother. His mother was a big star in town, her and Gladys Knight. They went to Washington High School. And um, she started taking me to her concerts in, at, at, at some of the big clubs in Atlanta. Um, Sensations on the east side. Um, uh, Mr. B's figure eight. And I was able to watch her show from the dressing room. And um, at this lady's house, I got to meet New Edition. I got to meet- Say word, is this Bobby? Ronnie, Bobby, Ricky, Mike, Ralph, yeah. Johnny too. That's just that because time. It was it was amazing because at this time she had a record out called Closer to Close. Okay. There was a big record in Atlanta that went gold, and they was opening up for her in the islands for one of these shows, and they came to her house before they left to go overseas. Got to meet them there. Peebo Bryson, uh, Stevie Wonder has been over her house. Wow. Uh, a lot of people don't know that the SOS band, you know, that band was created in my neighborhood. I used to go buy my first music from the girl that used to be the lead singer of SOS. Wow. So a lot of this was going on in the neighborhood at the time. So she was like, oh, y'all like hip hop. And we was like, yeah. So she bought her son 
his first studio. So I know that Joseph was kind of like the first kid that I knew that had his own studio. Oh, wow. So I remember the day so vividly because the first record we played in the studio when we hooked everything up was LL Cool J, Jack the Ripper. Jack the Ripper. And we thought that record was so crazy. It was just like LL had turned from the lover boy rapper into a battle rapper. Yeah. And destroying people. It was our journey on into hip hop. And around her is where I got the bug to want to be in the music business. That's why I tell people all the time, it wasn't hip hop that got me into this. It was me being with an R and B singer and her cousin being Peebo Bryson, also a star in Atlanta, being able to see them close up and being like, that's what I want to do. Well, she was the first person that turned her garage into her closet. Oh, so wow. as a that kid. like a lot of clothes. <laughs> <laughs> like a lot of clothes, a lot of shoes. <laughs> a garage into a closet. Right, right. She turned her a two-car garage, that was her cl closet. So these are the things I was seeing as a kid. So, you know, I remember one year, it was her daughter's Miriam birthday. And she was like, I'm going to take you to a concert. We're having Miriam's birthday. And I remember we went to the Fulton County Stadium and her birthday was with the Jackson Five. Oh, wow. And is, is Michael there? Yeah. Okay, carry on. I just... This is just going on as a kid. Yeah. Like, and being in Atlanta and just seeing so many of our heroes from uh, Andrew Young, uh, everybody that represented Atlanta, you got to really see, touch and feel them. I used to see um, Larry Blackman. He used to ride around Greenbrier in his Ferrari. Like we started noticing him when he, once he had the red cup and all that, then we started seeing this red Ferrari just going to Greenbrier, I might ride through Greenbrier. We'd be like, is that Larry Blackman? Like, yeah, that Larry Blackman. So understand 15 years later when we got to get to do the Goody Mob album and Rico say, we're not, record, we're not recording in Stankonia, we're not recording mm. in Boss Town. We're recording in Curtis Mayfield House, and he stayed right here in Southwest Atlanta, right behind the churches on Camelton Road. Speaking of all that, um, this is early hip hop era we're talking about here. When did hip hop really hit Atlanta, though? What what time was that when hip hop really hit Atlanta? Mm. Eighty two, eighty three. That early? Yeah. Say word. Yeah. Jomo, Jomo. That's early, early. I'm Thank you. Because, see, Jomo, he was the first Atlanta dude that had a big record. And he was the first dude that when Run DMC first started coming to Atlanta, jo, jo, uh, he was the first person to perform with them in the clubs. So that was a trip because when Run and DMC first came to Atlanta, they was like, wow. Atlanta dudes got rap music, they, yeah. and they got their own wax, they got everything. And it was like, it was this dude from Bankhead. He was the first rapper from Atlanta. You know, so New York, especially the artists, Russell Simmons, they always knew that Atlanta was a hot spot for uh, music and hip hop music. That's what's up, that's what's up. Speaking of, so then, how do we get to the formulation of Goody Mob? How do you all come up with this name? Hmm. Well, Goody Mob was already really around. If you go to the Outkast first album and, and 3000 say, Big Gip, Goody Mob, I wasn't in Goody Mob then. A word? Oh, okay. Me and CeeLo was so, I was in a group called East Point Chain Gang. CeeLo was a solo artist. East Point Chain Gang, in my group, I had Cool Breeze. Wow. I had Cap One. His name is Capone. That's the father of Southside, the producer mm -hmm. from East Point. It was also a guy named uh, Big C. So us, we had a group, and we was doing Chain Gang. First time, me and Cujo always been friends. So Cujo had his own thing, and it was called Goody Mob. And uh, Cujo and the P-Funk Goody Mob. But well, people don't understand, that was Joe street crew. Mm. 
That was Dixie Hill. Okay. That was in the project selling this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, talk that talk, so, it. So, so it's like Cujo did that, Gibby did this. First time we had a real concert together was at Mars Brown. This is the first year. This is when Naughty by Nature had their record. South the tracks. Yep. And this is also when Cypress is the first time mm. Cypress this is the first time Cypress Hill performed in Atlanta. Uh. So we was on the show as the opening acts. From there, I saw him again. And we was in a talent show. And they beat us. And, and this is, are you talking about Cypress Hill here? Yeah. And let's be clear, Cypress Hill, did, this Cyper is Cypress Hill. Cypress Hill came to Atlanta. Word. Had a concert at Mars Brown. Okay, uh, Naughty by Nature performing, Cypress Hill's performing. Goody Mob, Cujo and the Goody Mob, which was Timo and, and, and Cujo. Okay. And Gip was performing with the East Point Chain Gang. Okay. First time we saw each other on stage. Oh, wow. But me and Cujo was already friends. Me and Timo, I knew Timo, but I didn't, we, and we went to the same high school, but I didn't hang out with Timo. You know Facts. what I mean? I just knew Cujo. So we did that. We did another competition and we lost again. During that time is one day, uh, Ray called me. He said, man, Reek, Reese said, come up the street. They want to play some music for this group. I said, okay, cool. When we get up there, it's Twan and Dre. They got blonde hair. I pull up in my trooper. I jump out. And Reek was like, these, these two guys, my sister said, they dope. He said, I want to see if they can rap. He gave me the, 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 the tape. The tape was DOS Effects. Hmm. That's the fix. Diggity first, diggity dies. The first, the first single. And, and remember back then, they used to put the single on the first mm -hmm. and then on the back, it used to be the instrumental. Instrumental, mm -hmm. yeah. So I put this, the, the, the disc in, uh, the, the, the tape in to do the instrumental and Twan and Dre rapped until that shit went off. Oh, wow. And Reek said, y'all coming <laughs> to the dungeon. <laughs> 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 so after this happened, right, this is all happening at the same time. Reek is leaving the low and moving into a house in Lakewood. Okay. Outcast and Dre and Big is in their 11th, 12th grade year. Dre was like, I ain't going back to school. Mm. I'm going to the dungeon for 12th grade. Big was like, I can't drop out of school. They'll send me back to Savannah. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> so Big stayed in school. Dre came to the dungeon first. And after that first year, we just worked on their album. Doing that, I leave Chain Gang. I come to the to the dungeon. CeeLo hasn't made it there yet. It's just really us, Organized Noise, Outkast. Uh, and it's really just like Dre, because B going to school every day. And so at that same time, you know, I go over to meet Cujo one day on the west side. And he's standing there rapping in a group of our friends. And then this other little cat was standing there. He's just started rapping. And then he stepped back and he started singing. And I was like, who's that? <laughs> Who are that? It was CeeLo. But I didn't know CeeLo as CeeLo. I knew CeeLo as Chickenhead. Chicken, that was his name? That was his street name. Oh, OK. So it was like, nah, that chicken, that is, like, he rapped. So, my, so I knew of him. But didn't know he even rapped the son, none of that. So I ran back to the dungeon and was like, yo, bro, it's this little dude. It's the dude on the west side, bro. I ain't never seen this shit before. They were like, yo, bring him to the dungeon. When he got to the dungeon, Dre instantly seen Lo and was like, nigga, <laughs> <laughs> what's up? <laughs> so we didn't know that him and him and him and CeeLo went to alternative school in Riverdale together. Mm. On, on 138. Oh, 138. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. this is amazing. They went to alternative school together, so they knew each other. So it was like instantly once CeeLo got there, I think that's when it started doing like this. It started coming together? It started coming together. Because all of us really, 
was like, let's let's, let's put the outcast in the front now, because so that so that was that was y'all decision to put outcast out first. Yeah. Then y'all come out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because okay. we had already performed for for the face. What people don't understand is when when L.A. and Babyface came to town, it was like L.A. and Babyface with Pebbles. Okay. So Pebbles was the shit mm-hmm. to everybody on the street. Mm-hmm. So Pebbles was the one that started going around and grabbing people. TLC, all this, uh, Kawan Prather. Uh, so the first people signed out of the, the Dungeon family, the Dungeon family didn't start with Outkast and Goody Mar. Dungeon family started with Parental Advisory. Let me ask you this, not to cut you off. Because we here. <laughs> you going to ask okay, a question? I do. Go ahead. Okay, Go so ahead. this is the question we want to know. And you may debunk this. Is this a myth? Is it true that CeeLo was originally supposed to be a part of Outkast? It wasn't that he was a, originally supposed to be wow. an Outkast. They performed together at somebody's... Uh, you remember how the schools used to have a little program for people who want to rap? <laughs> wow. Yes, I do. So one day they was doing something, and I think Lowe was there, and they performed together. Oh, okay. And that was something they did as kids. Like, and then they never saw Lowe again. Oh, okay. They all went their own way. So to say, yes, it's not that he originally spo- Well, they performed together mm-hmm. at that time. Because Outkast was like two guys that just met each other in school and happened to like to rap. But as far as just knowing that they was going to be a group, they was working on the formulation of that at that time. So CeeLo came through, did his thing, and he was gone. You know, because CeeLo was on a, when it comes to street shit, CeeLo was 20 years ahead of them. Mm. But, but was CeeLo really, he was really in the street? Oh, yeah. He seemed was. so calm. Mm. <laughs> Yo, I never knew that. He seemed like just. Yeah. All of us are older. Okay. <laughs> say no more. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> say, see, see. Twan, Dre, and CeeLo same age. Me, okay. Cujo, and, and, and Timo the same age. I'm the youngest out of them three, and I think he the youngest out of them three. Okay, 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 okay. So, yeah, like, uh, CeeLo just always hung with the, with, you know, we, we, yeah. we, we the straighteners. <laughs> <laughs> we the straighteners and the takers, man, you know what I mean? So, that's why you never heard no, that's why you never heard of nobody really Handling good him up. Yeah, y'all ain't never really had Very no beef true. with nobody. Very Cause true. it was like ever. It was. And a, y'all been around some. And get, we, you know, y'all been around we, some stuff. We have been around everybody, but everybody knew, like behind Outkast and some other niggas. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> that that they they don't really play the radio. Okay. And Cujo, he he was a he he was just something else then. Okay. You know okay. What I mean? So it's just for us because of what happened in '95 Source. It put a chip on our shoulder that made us mm-hmm. even more about standing on what we was on. Is, it, I mean? is that when you you guys got the, rated for the mics? Well, well, the mics situation really never really tripped us out because we looked at it like we got four and a half mics. This was a serious thing back then. And CeeLo got yeah. rhyme of the month. Yeah. To us, we did something no other Southern crew did before that. Like, we got four and a half mics out of New York, which mm-hmm. to us, that's five, period. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and then on top of that, CeeLo, the first Southern rapper to ever get lyrical rhyme of the month in the source. That was incredible. I want to, um, no. let's, we're going to keep That's that. what made Goody Mob and Outkast damn near attached at the, at, okay. at, at, at the hip because they album got rated so big, which they should have got five mics. Even Benzino said, now I said, man, they should have got five mics. <laughs> but I ain't know him like that. Yeah, you know what I, mean? I heard him say that. Uh-huh. You know what no, I, mean? I heard him say that. He told me, he, when I sat down with him, he was Shout like, out yo, to Benzino. Bro, I didn't know him. I, yeah, OG. But he was like, damn, I just didn't know him like that. Hell, who would have saw that? I'm like, you're right, you're right. <laughs> that's a, that's you know what I mean? And I, and I was like, uh, but I was like, what was the other part of it was when CeeLo got Rhyme of the Month, that's when Biggie Small started calling for CeeLo. Oh, wow. Biggie so, so, so Biggie was hitting him? That's crazy. Biggie, Biggie Kim, that was CeeLo crew. Wow. Oh, wow. That was like Kim would get here and call Lo, be like, I'm here for the video. And he would go make sure she was right. And Biggie was just like, he was a CeeLo fan from the first time he heard CeeLo. Like, so the night we perf- performed, 
Southern Player Ristic in New York for the first time. Southern Player Ristic. Biggie Smalls was in the front of the stage oh, rapping right. CeeLo. Get up, get out, and get some verse, word for word. Wow. That's what we knew. Big, 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 really. He really messed with us. Uh, it ain't got nothing to do with the industry. Yeah. I'm talking about what he's talking about. I can identify with that. And Big still wasn't Big. Big was bandana big with the yeah, hockey he was jersey. still he was still on that brooklyn type of yeah, town yeah so yeah it, south of brooklyn you, you you really had to say something for him to even say hey bro come here and when b when he shawty got off stage they went and had their own conversation like he loved him and he wanted to really really work with low so and he was a fan of low man like Dad. we wasn't officially goody mob to after get up, get out, and get some came out, cause that's when LA said shit. Oh yeah, we had. I ain't about to let it in. Go, but yeah. but shit, they got the sign. Everybody got the sign. So then Ian Burke said, check this out. Won't everybody be in Goody Mob? That's even Outkast organized. That's everybody in Goody Mob. We do everything together, and once y'all get on, y'all can do your solo thing. Mm. So, if you think about it, once we got to the third Goody Mob album. Low with like shit, I wanna go sing. <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta look, he said, Gibby, we have been, we, we, we have did 10 years and no competition. Mm -hmm. 10 years, no competition, bro. Like, we've did, Out we on every Outcast album, every Goody Mob album. He said, man, it's time for me to go sing. Man, hey man, who, who would ever knew, man? You turn that singing into Nas Barkley. And just like right now with Dre doing it with the flute, it's like I ain't seen them do things that I know other rappers can't pull off. That's why my confidence in my crew is like, shit. Talk about talent. Ain't nobody fucking with us. Ain't nobody messing with Atlanta, Gip? Yeah. That's how you feeling? Yeah. like That's I, how you feeling? I'm like, okay. I know if you put my crew on the stage with any crew you want to go get, my crew can break this shit down and do shit in so many ways that if you ain't got a CeeLo, what, if you ain't got Lauren, what you got against CeeLo? Facts. You ain't get, if you ain't got that, you can't mess with that. And I don't know nothing that's him in the music business. Mm -hmm. I don't, he's the only one like him. You yeah, he's I mean? special. So when I say what I say, I'm like, bro, Dre could be anything you think is number one, but he don't even want it. How cool is that? Hey man, I don't want that shit. I want to. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, how cool is that? Big is one of the most shrewdest businessmen around here. And has. How could you say Dre is top tier, not big? Ain't he on the same record? Oh, you can't get the same credit in the same space. It hurts your, hurt your feelings too bad to say two niggas is as bad as one. Hey man, but it's the facts. He's on every record he's on. Yeah, they, sometimes they try to front on Dre, though. They try to front on me. Yeah, I like, mean, Big Boy, they, they sometimes, try, yeah, sometimes they try like, to front on him. Yeah, that's a fact, though. They see, do. They do. See, I see. Yeah, and, that, and, 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 and that's why, because okay. I'm like, look, to me, Run DMC, I always love Run for being that. Yeah. <laughs> that was like, he was the, to me, that was the Northern Pimp C. The yeah. way Ron okay, did okay. it back in the day. Man, I want 10 pairs of Adidas. Shut out the Ron. Ron. <laughs> you know, so when you look at the things that Ron did that made him cool in the hood, that's what Big always represented for Outkast. Mm -hmm. Man, come on, man. DMC is the epitome of what 3,000 years. That's, that's a fact. Hey, man, what you doing? Man, I ain't studying that shit, man. I'm over here doing cartoons, man. That's that. That's what make them kind of artists special because you know why they got in the room somewhere and somebody told them some shit they ain't agree with. Mm. They said, you know what? Before I go chase that that fantasy you want me to be, I go be me. Mm. And that's what happens to most people in the music business. You know, people don't just get in this shit and, and figure out who they want to be. Some people have been trained to be a certain way and some people have been given power to be in their position. Now, for me, I look at it like, you know, when you make statements, you know, men lie, women lie, but numbers don't. Pull our numbers up. There you go. And from the South, I'm on damn near every superstar you heard after us. Now that's a fact. 
That's a fact. So if I'm on every album from Memphis to Texas, how you and D.M. on and keep it? But since I ain't recognized- Talk that talk, Gib. You know what I'm just saying? Yo, get, we, get, we the ladder, <laughs> man. Like, Listen, we the ladder. Talk that talk, Gib. <laughs> and I be looking at it like, you look at me, bro. You can't find one rap that I never rapped the same for 25 years because I've never copied nobody else's style. And every style that I ever rapped over, or any beat I ever rapped over, the beat gave me the rhythm. I ain't never used no style as my as my brace, as my, no. That ain't how Organized Noise taught us. Organized Noise say a real artist is going to create every time. Mm. A prop is going to do the same thing every mm. time. Uh, that's for all your new MCs out there. That's for all your new MCs out there. Straight up. Like, like I, I, I got to say this though. Like, I'm from New York. Mm -hmm. And... I know Atlanta always say that New York don't show Atlanta love. That's not true. I No, no, no. I'm saying I, I got homeboys from Atlanta. They always say this. We love Atlanta. I know this. Word. We was like, when, when Southern Playlist that came out and South Derby came out, never heard nothing like it. We was like, yo. Mm -hmm. We never heard nothing like this in our life. You know, mm -hmm. we from the era of Child Called Quest. Right. And then when y'all came out, we was like, we rocking with these dudes. Right. You Straight were. up. A sound that's like unheard of. Mm -hmm. Like get up, get out and get something. We never heard nothing like that. Mm -hmm. So my question to you is this, since you guys being the creator of, to me, uh, the South hip hop, do you like what the South is doing right now? Mm. And, I, and, I, and I wanna ask you about Future, because I know Future's one of them guys you guys kinda raised too in a sense, you know what I mean? That's Dungeon Fan. See, I know, I uh, told her that. Uh, she I didn't believe me. I knew that. No, I told, you didn't. I told you. My auntie told me that before no, she, I got myself together today. I told yeah, you that. Yeah, I told her. I was like, I'm I was, saying I knew that now. I, was, I told you about CeeLo and the myth. But I told you about credit credit I was like, Future is part of Dungeon Family. That's but fair. people didn't know it. People okay. didn't know okay. because of what, how he does things. But I hope if you listen to Killer Mike last album and listen to the song with 3000, Future showed you he can rap if he want to. Okay. Okay. But what Future did is said, look, I come from a family of spitters. I gotta find my niche. I think Future the dope is out here though. You know That's I mean? my pain. That's smart. Yeah. That's smart to say, okay, 3,000 big shit. C shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Goddamn Cujo, which stuff. I gotta find my shit. Them <laughs> niggas worry, Smith. I'm gonna do it this way. He just did it. Hey, I'm the, the young nigga, they cut that shit, huh? They, uh, you doing too much, huh? You talking too much, huh? We ain't cut that shit down. So I'm like, you a master the game of short of short speaking. That's cool because at the end of the day, people in the South listen to beats, hooks. Yes. That's a fact. Yes, they ain't in. Yeah, he, you right. He just had mastered that shit where they were listening to y'all, Uncle, because we were trying to make people understand us. Now, it's about being in the club. That's why I tell anybody, hey, bro, hey, I love Drake. I love who you want to say you love. Uh -oh. But ain't no artist going in no club and out playing Future. I told her that. Can start. Oh, man. I told her that. We just had this Get, conversation. I just told her that. Didn't I just say this to you, you in the car? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Say hey, word. I, listen, listen. <laughs> you did, listen. okay? I just told her that. She don't want to listen. I, I didn't say that. I went, I go down to, I, I go down to the trenches of Atlanta. Down to like Club Ace, Ford and Industrial. Okay. You know what I mean? That sounds like it's trenches. Sound, sound like and, the tunnel. Look here. They <laughs> sound can, like the tunnel. They can crank that thing up by 930. And they can play Future from 10 o'clock to 3 o'clock in the morning. All night. I, I think Future is the illest. I mean, I, I'm a fan. I never said I wasn't. I didn't say that. I didn't say I'm that. I'm just saying. I, I, I said, hey, man. Future is like, hey, man. oh, my God. And the youngest, I, and the, and the youngest love it. The you. youngest love it. The youngest thank love you. it. They look at Future is they Jay-Z. I don't care what you're talking about, bro. Like, and it's, it was hard to get past Jeezy and Tip now. Oh, it was hard to you get past. It was, it was hard. hard. I said it was hard. We, get, listen, let, get Jesus had these streets. Don't Hold on, I'm not gonna him. save you. I feel like it's coming I'm, now. I'm not gonna save you. In front of company now. <laughs> we listen. We was in the car. We was having a debate before we before you came in. Oh, and my I said, I said, who I think is top to come out of Atlanta, and I said Future. She brought up Ti. And I was like, T.I. T.I. top tier. But I'm gonna tell, but I'm gonna tell you a person. That, I'm gonna tell you a person that is slid right there, in between T.I. G's. They don't give him credit. Two chains. 
Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. You right. Two you right. Chains. Two, two chains got some heat. Way, yeah. Way back. Two chains be here. Yeah. yeah. Right. And he got catchy stuff. Hey. And, 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 and if you think he don't about, get that credit though. Oh, see what I'm saying? Yeah, I you would right. Agree. Yeah, he don't get the, he should. Shout out to two chains. That's a lot of music. Yeah, two chains got That's some hits. A lot of music to listen to. He he, he 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 helped hold that Def Jam up when yeah. it was at him and Ye. You right. You right. You know what I mean? So I look at. You can say what you want to say about Chain. Chain's top tier. Chain mm-hmm. top five. Ooh. Y'all heard what you heard what he said. Five. You heard what he said. It ain't in Atlanta. Ain't no top five. Cause we all kings. That's why. You know what? Yo, you know, yo, you know what I love about you so much. Like pause. Straight up, man. You always keep Atlanta like this. Mm-hmm. And like e- even when Killer Mike won the Grammy. And it's like you understand. Like we all won the Grammy. We all won. The I, Grammy. I, I've been around a lot of cities, Gip. It ain't like that no other city. Mm. Atlanta got that though. Mm-hmm. They got that camaraderie. Mm-hmm. Like they have that. A lot of the other cities, they don't have that. They because, definitely don't have that in New York. Because, Y'all already know what's because, up New York. Because it's not built. See, when you look behind Killer Mike, you see G's, you see Paul Judd, you see, you see Kasim Reed, uh. you see, mm-hmm. you see giants that stand in other industries. See, that's what I didn't like about New York politics record company. Yeah, it's crazy. There's a lot of folk that look like me telling me L.A. Reid ain't nothing. Mm. Man, L.A. Reid and made more black people rich than anybody around here. Y'all pick one guy and put it all in his hands and kill everybody else. L.A. Reid and fed the whole town. Hey, you talking about? It was a Dallas, it was a Jermaine, and it was an organized North at the same time. North, everybody eat. A guy about Jermaine, I'm tripping. That's that's the difference of what I feel like them buildings up there taught people. They taught people, okay, instead of having everybody eat and everybody stay powerful, you want to kill this and make one person powerful. Why is that? This ain't sports. This ain't, how can you say one person is the best? Hey, what? <laughs> Can't no one person say they the best? That means you ain't listening to nobody, you ain't get no help from nowhere. I do know about sauce money. Ooh. I know about You said sauce money. I know about yeah. I know yeah, yeah, about yeah. the lyricists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fact, fact. Everybody ain't learned off their own thing. So I look at when you do things like that, that's when the political and that's when them you playing with them other people rule books. You know, when you can say once something is number one, it kills the light for anything else. Mm-hmm. What do you think made New York so great? Nobody could say they was number one, bro. We love Big Daddy Kane like we love Rocky, Word. Biz Markie. We love all that because it's all making New York look beautiful and big. But when you start narrowing it down to one man got the sauce, come on, man. Mm. No, that's when you kill your flame. That's when you kill your city. That's why I will stand here to his old way and say, no, we all kings. Nobody's number ooh, one. Ooh, 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 you ooh. just king of your neighborhood. Okay. You can't, you can't be king over here. So that's what I mean. If you anoint all kings, we stay powerful. If you just anoint one, he could be killed. That makes sense. Atlanta together though, I ain't gonna lie. You know what I mean? Yeah, so that's, together why, in Atlanta. that's why you gonna see, even when it come to Miami, Atlanta and Miami, we cousins, yeah. we run together. Texas, we run together. See, I made all these, we made all these alliances first year. How do we come back from the source? We made the alliance with Memphis. Made the alliance with Texas. And, and, th- and this, is, this, is, this is the year that Big Boy went on stage, right? Mm-hmm. I, I, gotta, I gotta go there because, real fast. Because that year, even if you loved the big one, the South disagreed. I, and the South was like, no, nah, bro, we listen to Big Mike. I'm serious. I mean, I feel you, pimp, but hey, man, Texas is bigger than everything, man. So if we don't matter, hey. Yeah, yo, that's <laughs> no, no, that's no, no, that's the realest that's thing, though. <laughs> I got to ask you this, man. We here. Let's say we're a podcast. Take us back to the energy that night oh, when, 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 when Andre 3000 goes on stage and says the South got something to say. Nobody expected that. We was in New York. I was there. Let's add it. Let's add it. And they standing with the Bronx. (laughs) Facts. And they they with the Bronx when they say it. That's a fact. (laughs) So it's like the energy was this. We walked in the building with the Bronx, Big Blue Williams, representing for Queen Latifah, Shaquem. Facts. Flavor unit. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, we are being introduced 
to what it looks like, what hip hop looks up, looks like outside of the BET situation. What people don't understand during those first years, everybody was everybody's career was really made and 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 made and and we got our professionalism off BET Teen Summit. Okay. That's what all of us. Yes. All of us got our toolish. That's what all of us okay. learned how to be in oh. front of the TV. <laughs> you know, we was there a lot of times speaking on on things that was going on politically. That's the first time we got to see most deaf. First time we might have got to see um, all of the new rappers that was coming out doing that sign. O C. O C. Oh like, wow. Like so. Our first tour after that night. That night was like being on a prison yard to us because what people don't understand is that that was the first night that all of us got to see each other in the flesh. We had mm -hmm. only watched each other videos and called. You talking about all the rappers in the All sense. the rappers. Oh, all so the, all the, oh, oh yeah, yeah, this is back in the day. Yeah. yeah we we oh. never got to see each other. We only got to see each other perform on Saturday mornings on Teen Summit. Like, damn, they go be. Okay, they go most deaf them. Okay, I know the energy was crazy. Tribe Call Quest. Okay, and I know he said a prison yard. Like, <laughs> yeah. I like it, it, wow. and it was like a prison yard because you know when you get on prison guards, you know that shit break down in the cars. Who you with? What neighborhood? Yeah, 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 yeah. What state you with? So we get there, and this is when. I see that New York is divided. I never mm -hmm. see oh, yeah, New, New York, York is, is divided on some shit like we from Brooklyn, we from the Bronx, yeah, from Queens. Definitely. You know what I mean? Shout out to New York. Y'all already know we need to stop that. But and and, and, and <laughs> it was just on some, you know, on on some hip hop shit. You yeah. know what I mean? So it was dope because I got to see the difference. I got to see Biggie, Brooklyn. I got to see what that looked like. Whoa. Big had on his linen, man. He had his boots <laughs> on, man. Big on it. You know what I mean? I got to see what Brooklyn looked like. Big was showing out that night. So I got to see that. I got to see the Wu-Tang Clan. Staten like, Island. I got to see Staten Island, man. A hundred deep. Rizzo running the goddamn. He just running the whole show. That was amazing. I got to see Death Row. Like, wow. Like, look at Snoop them. Like, look at Corrupt them. Daz them. Like, it was it was amazing to see, and they you got also understand that this is the first time all of us getting to see our dress codes. Yeah. Oh wow. Like, like okay, that's creeping in blood. Like for real. Like, I believe that's true. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean, like we yeah. getting to see Chuck Taylor's like up close. Like I ain't never <laughs> want no Chuck Taylor. Shout we out to corrupt. <laughs> Shout out to Dog Pound. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Was, <laughs> it was Reebok. We from Atlanta. We didn't know nothing about no Chuck. We like oh, okay, Reebok. cool. Okay. Then we seeing the boots. We like. So niggas really do be wearing these boots like they hard folks. We like, Timberland people. Yeah, like we yeah, looking we, like. We tear, shout out to New York, man. They really around, they're killing that shit. Like, you know, we seeing how it look good. It look good on big. You know what I mean? We seeing the style. We seeing the. That's when everybody started wearing the long chain. The long chain. The long chain started coming out. Everybody was on the rollers. We were like, oh, okay. You know what I mean? That night was just very amazing. And what I say is that. I feel like the, the death the death row show was the most incredible rap show I had ever seen. The performance, that, right? Yeah, yeah because even before the end, I think LL Cool J coming out the box was one of the most impressive yeah. rap shows I ever saw, and rock him on the pyramid. Mm -hmm. That was crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we hip hop heads, <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, I had seen a lot of shows, but when death row came out. And all of them came out of these cells, rapping mm -hmm. these hit records from the West Coast. It was impressive to see. And back then, you couldn't rap on top of the music. You had to be that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So to hear Lady of Rage come out and do that Afro Puffs, it was like. Sam Steed came out. Oh, man. Sam, Sam Steed. Steed came and out. Then and then Snoop killed it at the end. Quick came out. Quick came out. It was like, it was, it was just very, very, very entertaining and very scary. For real, because we were menacing as kids. All of us were kids then. But it was also, we all just wanted people to hear what we had to say over this music that we call hip hop. And, and not to cut you off, and this is really the first time the South really is introduced to this like yes, environment this is, in I a think, sense. I think Am I correct? Is, yes, this is the first time because I think this is the first time that the South really got records that people have to recognize. Okay. You had lyricists of the year, you had, uh, um, Big Mike, 
you of course you had big in that in that category too lyricists of the year uh album of the year outcast was in that of course big then was in there also but then you had song of the year that we disagreed with and that was the 69 boys uh tootsie mm -hmm. roll we felt like them guys had did uh, MC Hammer. Oh, they from here too, right? They from the they from boys? no six nine boys from Orlando. Okay, okay, okay. They from Florida. They from, okay. But what people didn't recognize about the sixty nine boys is that they were independent then. They were in. Damn. They were independent. And this they, is at a time when you had to be signed to a major. Let's oh, just wow. be clear. Back in the day, you you know yes, you, you had know. to be signed. You got to be major. signed to a major. You had to. I didn't know that. And these guys were independent mm. with a pop record. Yeah. They crossed over. That was incredible, man. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's what. That's why we was kind of like. I thought they were signing Luke, bro. We was listening to their album. I was drinking Boom Farms because I was listening to Sixty Nine Boys. <laughs> so their impact <laughs> around me was very much felt, and I was just like, but when they got up there and did their thing, boy, they got booed. I know you. Yeah, New York is tough. But I understand that yeah. because see, organized noise. Ray Murray is a lyricist. They, they about lyricism, lyricism, saying something, having something to say. Read. If you don't read, you have nothing to say. Mm -hmm. So you gotta understand the principles that I'm built on. So when when people be taking it as I don't mean to be uh, disrespectful when I say it is nothing that came out with me. That can stand over me. Uh. Because for me personally, if you didn't come from uh, 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 Ice T, Chuck D, KRS One, uh, Dougie, if you came after that, then man, you, I mean, wow. Yep. Because in Atlanta, I look at like when, when that was going on, I was in middle school. And the first rappers on at, that I saw in the flesh was Curtis Blow, mm -hmm. the Fat Boys, Run DMC, MC Roxanne Shante. Roxanne Shante. Shout out to Queensbridge. They, Roxanne Shante used to come here all the time and work with CeeLo grandmother. Wow. For, you know, that was when they was doing all the, you know, Stop the Crack campaign yeah. and all that Ronald Reagan type stuff. So, so Lowe used to see her all the time. Run DMC used to be here all the time. DM, DMC used to live on Old National. R DMC was a real street cat. Yeah. Like, street cats in Atlanta knew DMC. Yeah, that's, like, yeah. He hung out in 20 grand. That was like wow. the old 20 grand. The 20 grand was an old oh, juke oh, joint. Oh, okay. okay. That where the old Atlanta hung Man out. for a week. <laughs> you gotta be really from here to be yeah. hanging out. Okay. So, understand, Jam Master J used to kick it with where our dad is. Yeah, Jam Master J, he, yeah, you right here, yeah, he, he was a street dude in New York, though. Yeah. Like, for real. <laughs> so, Rest we respected peace. Jam Master J on a whole nother type label, uh, 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 level. Gip was the first rap con contract I ever got. I was signed by Easy Lee. Who, where is it, who Easy Lee used to DJ for? Furious Folk? Furious Five? Kumo D? Mm. Kumo D and him moved here in the early 90s. Everybody moved to Atlanta. Kumo D here, Chubb, Rock here. Chubb, wow. Everybody so, moved up. So you gotta understand that even y'all greats, I've been able to sit up under them and it's, it's about this, 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 and this. That shit there, that ain't about that it. That mean nothing. That's not hip hop, that's, that's commercializing hip hop. Mm -hmm. So understand that when to me, after Pac and Big, I look at it like this. Most of the people that people look up to, I look at it, if you came after Pac and Big died, I can look at you and say, oh, you from they tree. Anything after Big, anything after Big, you from Big Tree. You look over here, Jay-Z from Big Tree. 50 Cent from Pac Tree. Wow. 
Yeah, I can see that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I can see that. Like, no disrespect. Yeah, I'm nah, just nah, saying nah. that what people got to understand is Gippy walked the earth with these people. So at the end of the day, I don't care what they created out here in the world for people to understand the intake. I'm talking about when you was dead then that, hey, man, when them giants walked the world, I didn't know you. I didn't know your name. <laughs> talk that talk, dude. Yo. You know I mean? Yo, that's all, and Gip, you being real humble, but you talking that talk. Like, like, I, I, just saying, I ain't and, even know your name. And, and, and that's, that's, what, that's why people got to understand that you can't never ask Gippy to bow because I was talking to the great. I, when them them walking the earth, they didn't, you wasn't a conversation. You wasn't in that it top was a stamp. Five. You yeah, weren't yeah, even there. Yeah. So I'm looking at if them men, if them two men stayed on this earth, I don't know what this, this, this mm. what we see now would have been there. Oh, mm. oh, uh-oh. I don't know. You don't think Jigga be Jigga? He still would have been Jigga, but big. Mm. If he lived. Ooh. Then you would have had to cut a lot of your catalog away because yeah. you couldn't use the lyrics because he lived. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. I always bro. thought about that though, being from New York. I always I just, felt like if Biggie would have stayed, or what happened with Jay Z. And, and, and I'm just saying, and I love Jay. That's what people get me fucked up, but they be like, man, give you be hating on Jay. I don't hate on Jay Z, bro. I just understand the dynamics of shit that you don't understand as a fan. That's the, I just understand you don't understand. That's tough, though. You know, and I understand this. Hey, man, DMX has got to be in the top three in New York. From our era, I just look at from our era, the impact. When I look at impacts, I look at your first album. DMX first album was crazy. Okay. My God. Okay. My mother listened to that. She's okay. the first lady. 50 Cent first album was crazy. <laughs> I'm looking, hey, I knew the first time I saw Mob D. Mm. Mm. Mob D came here. That's my favorite group back home. Okay. When they first came out, they album cover, they had on like 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 shawls and they had these sticks. They had the sticks, hand. the little the little joints. Right? That how that how far Gibby go back with them. Cause as soon as I heard their music, I was like, I like them. You know? When I look at groups like that, that's what I loved about New York. When you ask me, what's a great producer in New York? Pete Rock, who are you talking about? Shout out to Pete Rock. Pete Rock. When I listen to Pete Rock, I'm listening to New York. That's what I want to hear. When I, when I used to get out of the plane in New York, I heard New York. But about, but about right when Dave Chappelle went to New York, New York radio started changing. That's when you start getting a lot of Ludacris earned the right because Ludacris had great records. I forgot Ludacris was from here. Yes, yeah, Ludacris. Well, he moved here. Lud Ludacris. Oh, but see, but snap. But, but, Shout out to Luda. so but dope. See, but see, Luda and Shaka to me is Batman and Robin. Them two dudes had the greatest run next to Outkick. I forgot about Luda, man. The greatest run because Shaka and Luda really understood the politics of radio and, mm. and the record company. So by them understanding, they, they was able to move Ludacris very, very fast up the ladder in this game and understand how to play the game and do the game right. A lot of people got paid the right way because everybody eat. And I feel like that's one thing that you got to give Ludacris and shock. They really, really did it right. When you saying that Ludacris was actually on the radio when we had our first album out and I was listening to him and, as Chris Lover Lover. And then the next thing you know, he turns into a incredible hip hop act for Def Jam. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, that's that's why I tell people all the time is that I don't I don't uh, just don't put me in the box of that type of hip hop because I feel like when you start doing that stuff, that's when them people involved when they want to break hip hop down into sections and say this is better than this and this is better than this because I still remember the time that I wasn't listening to Rakim, I was listening to King's Son. Ooh, King's Son. I mean, I mean I'm saying, I, I, I have actually went through every level of hip hop and organized noise said, Jungle Brothers. Jungle Brothers. Go listen to that. Shout out to De La. You know what I mean? Our first tours was Goody Mob, The Roots, Fuji's. I love The Roots. Yeah. The second tour was Goody Mob, De La Soul, and Fishbone. 
Wow. Outkast's first radio, well, Goody Mark's first radio tour, all we had was get up, get out, get some, and call it a while. On that tour, I met Royal Flush. Shout out to Royal. He's doing better, too. <laughs> Shout out to Royal. Oh, gee. I love Queens you. in the house, flushing. Y'all already know what you. it is. Uh, it's New York thing. Mike Geronimo. Shout out to Mike Geronimo. <laughs> it's my guy, Flush. You know, he I, know. I met Herb Gotti. Ooh, Queens. And I, I met. Got a Mets hat on? I met, I met Ja Rule in the Cash Money clip. Oh, oh man. man. So we were opening up for them. This was, the, this was my first time going on the road with, with New York cats. You know what I mean? And getting the getting to learn how they speak, getting to learn how they move. Irv was always special, always Irv. <laughs> Jaru, I knew he would be a star in his own right. You knew that back then? He had his thing, uh, I mean, next to the other two members. Mm. I always thought Mike Geronimo was gonna be the one for him. Shout out to Mike, that's my Mike guy. Mike Geronimo, to me, I thought he was gonna be the one. I thought he was fabulous then. Yeah, mm. yeah, he was Master IC was. Because he was that, and then the person that, I feel like they represent a crew. OC, man. OC. He don't get that credit, though. OC, OC to me, was Brooklyn. one of Brooklyn. He don't get he that was, credit, though. He was, he, was, he was the best. He was one of the best, especially at that time. His lyrics and his delivery, yeah. I mean, it, he was unmatched. Yeah, OC was nice. He was I ain't gonna front of OC. So, Brooklyn. So, for me, I, I, I got to sit next to the dudes that really love the art. You know what I mean? And I just seen that once that shit get up to about 98, 99, that's when the money got into it. That's around, the, I think D, that's the DMX era. That's, yes. when, that's when That's when. the money got into it. Was Rockefeller it. out in 99? And yeah, that's all when, that was going on. Rockefeller. And, and that, that's when Def Jam was real hot. Was So So Def in that time too? All of, yeah, So So Def was doing 99? that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Money Ain't a Thing? When Money Ain't a Thing come out? Oh, oh, that's right then. That's right there? That's okay. 97 to 99. Okay, okay. So, you gotta understand, and, and people don't even understand, they re people be thinking we be tripping, we be like, you, I mean, Jay-Z, I mean, uh, J.D. did introduce the South to Jay-Z. We, we didn't know him before. Wait, 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 hold on, get, y'all didn't, y'all didn't, did y'all fool with Jay-Z at the time? No, like, we didn't. No. Where? We, no, we didn't, he wasn't even, he wasn't even. Like he said, we're just about good music and beats. Trying to say Jay Z ain't got so no good it music. It was amazing, no. but we weren't riding to it like it wasn't the I'm jam. I'm just saying like that, that it just seemed Word? like everybody. I never knew this. They be music. trying to change the shit. They, I just feel like right now in 2024, it's a lot of folk rewriting history. Yeah, There's a lot that. of rewriting going on. This shit is, <laughs> this shit is amazing to watch. <laughs> this shit, yeah. these folk out here acting like they've they been popping in the big talk dog talk, the whole yeah. time. Like, man, come on, man. Like, it wasn't like that for real, man. Yeah, come on. It wasn't. Like, remember now. I thought Jigga always was popping Remember here. now. Sir. Remember, sir. Word. No. We just didn't know it. We just didn't we know didn't it. We didn't know it. Not to say it wasn't amazing. It wasn't. But, you know, but, but you, know what like that, that. you know what that also shows, though? You got to remember, this was big town. I, 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 I did my first concert. crazy. My first concerts with, once we all got signed and the albums came out, the first big concert at the warehouse, LaFace and, Air, and, LaFace and Bad Boy, Outkast, Goody Mob, Biggie and Craig Mack. That's the first time I seen it. Like, it wasn't no talk of that. <laughs> That's why I be like sitting back like, how do these folks just rewriting history? Like, Don't no. get it twisted. No, and I'm not saying that they didn't have an impact, but hey man, Red Man and Method Man were oh, bigger than man. anything around here. That's who Atlanta loves. So Red Man and Method Man was bigger than Jay-Z in Atlanta. They had all the hits. Yes. Ooh. Red Man and Method Man, the first time they- Zay, you for real? Listen. listen <laughs> you gotta cut this out, Zay. <laughs> hey, <laughs> listen. Right now. The first time they performed here was a Def Jam party at Kaya. Wow. It's history. Jay performed, DMX performed, and Red Man and Method Man. Atlanta went crazy on Red Man and Method Man. Love them. They had just seen DMX. They were like, okay, DMX, he got on the goddamn overall with the chain. Okay, <laughs> okay, little country shit. Okay, we can dig that shit. He shot out there yelling at their head. Yeah, we feel that. And the way he rapped, we could understand him. Jay was a little sophisticated yeah. to the average kid back then because Jay was already getting money in another kind of way. He yeah. was in front of college kids. Yeah. 
that was going to the AU. Yeah, you said that with Rocky, yeah. That was Mars them. So yeah. you got to understand, like, where him and Dane was was probably further in these people's life. So they was kind of looking at him like, okay, Shawty got goddamn spin, but Shawty got goddamn got them words up there. Okay, yeah, okay. I ain't messing with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That boy, that's Shawty got them articulate. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's, <laughs> that's how I said it. Nah, I'm yeah. laughing. Shawty, I'm laughing. Shawty, they gonna be like, Shawty you know, articulate laughing? up there, bro. Because I'm in New York at this time, and I'm and I'm not even not like we look we looking at Jay Z like because you know I'm I'm growing up in New York at this time. We looking at Jay Z like he's on the real like. Like not to sound crazy, like God. Yeah, that's how he's looking at Jigger. Yeah. When yeah. Biggie died, because yeah. you know Nas had his little. He went. He went away for a little bit. Cause Nas was in Atlanta. Yeah. Okay. So we looking at. <laughs> so we looking at. So we looking. Went away. Nah. He, he was in Atlanta. He fought. So we look. So, so we looking at Jigger. <laughs> so we look at Jigger like ain't nobody messing with Jigger. That's how we was looking at Jigger at that time. Cause and that's amazing. And that's see, my word. I would never. I thought Atlanta was fooling with Jigger at that oh. time. But see, because wow. Def Jam was really like still trying to break him and DMX in Atlanta. Red Man and, and Myth was already broken in Atlanta. That's they, dope. Was, they was up there. They were jamming. The college kids were like, yeah, But you know, Meth and Red, they got that energy yeah. with them. So they, yeah, yeah, yeah. they instantly, they was, they was the shit. But like DMX, when that, we didn't know. They didn't know DMX and I didn't see Atlanta go crazy till the video came out. And we went to the dungeon. Let my dogs out? Yeah. And man, riding them motorcycles up there, everybody was like, oh, bro, that's him. Like, for a country dude, like, okay, he riding okay. motorcycles, he got the four-wheeler, he got to get them overalls on. That's that's like our everyday dress, and he popping that shit. They can relate, shit. okay. You know what I mean? So This is a lesson, though, because it, yeah. it shows you the geographical difference, too, though. Yeah, like, bro. how people can relate. And I you think a I mean? lot of time when people see me there, do little sound clips and don't say the whole shit, and they're just, oh, man. You got a problem with no, bro. Like I ain't got no problem. I'm just a person that's gonna tell it how it went. And even you was there. Even if uh, you ain't never heard of nobody come out and say out line is there. You was there. How many interviews I did? And you know, it came out out line. That's why you all know what's happening. The energy. Of <laughs> That's how you all know. You ain't heard nobody come back. Give line. Okay, well, okay. Was you there? You weren't there. Okay, well, shit. <laughs> that night, that night at the source, mm -hmm. it's funny because I always, I used to always watch that. I still watch the source. No, mm -hmm. I still watch YouTube stuff. I see y'all, y'all all behind Andre 3000. Mm -hmm. Y'all look like y'all about to do something. <laughs> the way, like, y'all was, y'all was on stage deep. Oh yeah, we was on stage. I remember, I remember seeing you. This is, you know, young Gib. Mm -hmm. You know, y'all like, like Andre had the dashiki joint on. I'm talking, about, I'm crunk too. Like, you, 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 was y'all, was y'all feeling some type of way? And I just want to know, mm -hmm. when he said the South got something to say, what was the energy that's like going back to the chairs? Did y'all walk back like, yeah, don't get oh, it twisted, y'all? Oh, cause, 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 instantly, I think people, people, the smart motherfuckers who was listening. They knew, like, they knew what was up. But I think that it was so much going on, because you gotta remember, after that happened, then that's when Snoop went that's on stage. Snoop so, you know, then nothing beat that moment. That was like, oh, Snoop, dog, Yo, that's you know, what, Snoop. That Soft Awards was crazy, though. <laughs> did Tupac yeah. have something with, um, was, was wait, that Soft Awards, was, was, did Q-Tip and Tupac get at that? That was the source before. That was, oh my God, that the Source Awards was, was crazy. So you got to understand that this source is when everybody showed up and everybody got money and records sold. Okay, okay. So okay. it was a little guy. So everybody was feeling this up a little bit. Everybody oh, came yeah. in. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Everybody was standing there like, they still with it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, so it's like, and the power, that was the reason why you saw Suge do what he did because that was when they felt like they had finally uh, Arrived. sold enough records, and you know, you know, I, Sugar Bell, man, Sugar Bell was something else, man. Sugar Bell, I, everything ain't ain't wrong about Sugar Bell. Just like it's 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 people I'm cool with in New York. The other people might not. Like Jimmy Hinchman, he he one of my cool OG. I, wow. I learned a lot from Jimmy, Jimmy Hinchman. Like, like I, I, you know, I know that. And so I'm sorry, Fifty Cent. I love you too. Uh -oh. But I'm just saying, like, you know, OG ain't never did me nothing wrong. He taught me a lot about New York. He taught me, like, understand that when, when, when Kanye West produced for Goody Mob, D-Dot got the record and brought it to us from Kanye. We did the record in Jimmy's studio in New York. So 
I've always been very, very connected with the, the, the architects of New York sound and music, you know what I mean? Like, and those are the ones that I look at and say, hey man, I love that y'all speak on, you know, one guy. But why y'all don't speak on Easy, 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 Easy Mo B? Like, understand, like, it's so many people that I feel like helped these, these, these places, these uh, bad boy Rockefeller. It's a lot of people that help these people. Why did y'all let one person just get all the light and don't speak about all the people that helped get there? And then it seemed like when people didn't work with nobody no more, you didn't hear from them people no more. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's New York like, is definitely like that though. And it's just like, damn, like that's like, a fact. You know what I mean? Like, cause you be like, what happened? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, like, like what happened? We don't like, know as fans. We be like, we don't really, really know. You know what I'm saying? So, so, you know, I've always been a fan. I listened to Noriega and Capone Ooh. before. That's you my know guys. what I mean? Like, give me, give me been the Capone house. You Shout out to mean? Capone. So, I always first time we got to New York. We went to K Slay house. Rest in peace, K Slay. I got Slay, the before, man. I got the rap on K Slay shit in his house. Like, I got the walk. I, I I got my first all platinum grill from 125th Mark, cross street from Apollo. You know what it's I mean? A fact. Like, <laughs> I, you know, I and it was a trip too, cause I was like, shit, I want this. And and and, and my OG who told me to go there was Eddie Gold. They used to be here. So Eddie was like, shit, I can't get in I gotta be back in the city to get that, Gibby. When you go to New York, go to the 125th Mark, tell them what you, you want some platinum. And that's why I went. So when people were like, yo, where you get that from? I got that from New York. I always, I've been built on New York. The first place I ever went to go get a record deal was in Philadelphia, Philly International. Mm. I got to meet the youngsters' father. Yo, the youngsters. Yeah, that, I need y'all on the show, man. I've been hitting them. Yo, I love, like, come on, man. You already know what's up with the youngsters, man. So, Illy Philly Funksters. So I, I, I am really, really, you know, for easily to be, to move from New York, move to Atlanta and say, yo, I'm about to sign some acts out of Atlanta. Chain Gang was signed to Easy Lee. The first time we performed at Easy Lee House, Jermaine Dupri came. That day, it was four girls that sung with, with uh, silk um, house robes on, and they had a hood on it. They sung and they walked off. That girl group was escaped. Oh, wow. Oh, man, okay. There's so much talent in Atlanta, though. You better know it. So it was like, we didn't even know it that day, but that day Jermaine saw them and signed them from Easy Lee House. And he was just a coincidence. He was just he just came through because Easy Lee was new to town and he was signing X, so he just came to see the showcase mm. and he seen Escape. It's so much like rich history in Atlanta, man. Like that's why, like I, I knew this interview was gonna be like this. I knew it was gonna be so much like history. I was looking forward to it because there's so much history in Atlanta when it comes down to hip hop. R&B, Atlanta has so much, so many iconic legends, man. I'm gonna tell you who turned Atlanta out. Uh -oh. Bobby Brown. Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh, we got clip this one right here. Hey, man. Is, is that Bobby hey. turned the land out? Hey, man. Shout out to Bobby, man. I say Bobby Brown, this studio we sitting in <laughs> right now. Okay. <laughs> this studio we sitting in right now, there used to be a studio we couldn't get in, it was a rock and roll studio. Bobby brought it, bought it, and this was Boss Town. Oh, and this wow. is where we recorded Southern Players and Cadillac Music. Wow. In that B room. Wow. When I tell people about the conversation that me and CeeLo had, it happened in the front of that, in the, in the foyer of, that, of this building. We, you know, CeeLo came and he said, hey bro, I got one time to rap. And he went in there and put down Get up, get out, and get some. The verse. That was the first time everybody heard it. Mm. He walked out of there. He said, Gip, I don't know, man. That won't be for my album. I said, hello. If you do this right, it won't be the last time you'll have a chance. That's a fact. Mm. And that became his biggest record out the gate. And 
I look, I, I just look at it like, and I tell people all the time too is that, to me, when you see Puff, see, the Atlanta version, first version of that was Divine Stevens. Divine Stevens is the one that used to go and teach Mary J how okay. to dance. Okay. When you see Puff doing them dances, mm -hmm. that's Divine Stevens mm -hmm. from Atlanta, Georgia. Southside. So when you think about a lot of things, think about all the people that some people came in contact with. When they come in contact with them, them people's careers seem to die and others seem to flourish. Mm -hmm. Because they ain't got something from them they ain't have. And that's what Atlanta's always been. It's been a mecca, just like New York. Like to me, going to New York and you not going to A Street, you ain't going to New York. Mm. If you didn't go hang out on on Houston, we did our third album at at at, at DJ Muggs house in his apartment on Houston. Like I we walked from one end of 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 uh Yeah, I was outside. Yeah, the park, man. We we used to we buy them icy things off the side of the street. <laughs> <laughs> so so it's like it's like like it's like for me personally, I I remember buying chocolate tie in New York. Okay. I remember walking into into the store with the Jamaicans. Chocolate tie. And the Jamaicans would say, hey man. Get your bag on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, I would just say that to me, New York has never been the same New York to me. Is this after Biggie after, Pass? No. Okay. It is after Biggie Pass, but I think New York, the city, it changed drastically after 9-11. Okay, okay. Mm. Okay. It was, just, it was just a different city after that. I like, can, I can, yeah, I can see that. It, it, I was there. It did change. You know what it mean? did change. Like, it was, it wasn't like the same. We used to hang out all night at Serafina's. Serafina's. <laughs> wow. At, 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 at the cub, at the cubby, the cubby, uh, cubby bear. Wow. Like my last time in the cubby bear, I was sitting there with me, Dallas, Joy, Prince, and George Clinton. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. Slow down. Slow down. You just you just said that. Did you you talk about yeah. Prince Prince like Prince 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 George Clinton Prince Wow Dallas Austin D Wow and George sound like an all star lineup y'all just chilling uh -huh. and that's where we used to hang out. The Cubby Bell was a place that we looked at as a place you could go to New York and really see some real hip hop shit. You know, Bahamadia. Oh wow, Bahamadia. <laughs> So that's where we used to so hang dope. out. You gotta remember, the greats always gonna hang out in the trenches. The the ones that wanna be stars of scene hang out Ooh. in Manhattan. Ooh. But Prince used to be in Cubby Bell. Wow. You know what I mean? So that, and, and that's that's another thing too, is that I just learned the difference between I tell people this. The reason why Atlanta seems to most black people outside of Atlanta, we seem black conservative. Why is that? Because my whole life I've only went to school with black people. I've never had to lessen myself to somebody else's community. And that's something that I learned was different in New York. It was like, yeah, we got up. there, you seen, yeah. The curly head. See, yeah. Them folk over there got money. Good. I never had like a, I never had like I never had like a real African American girlfriend until I moved to Texas. Yeah. Like when I was in New York I had like Puerto Rican girlfriends, we Dominican know, girlfriends. We like I had like and, like and, and that's just how it was. And, that, and that's why I'm like that's that, just how it was. It's easy to be here. I always yeah. say. You know what I'm saying? And that's why when people be like Oh my God, Beyonce! I'd be like, shit, we've been seeing Beyonce. I, I said the same thing. Yeah. Beyonce is just a normal girl that's yeah, in the no, South. You know what I mean? Okay. She, you would see, just you know, because now definitely a lot of Beyonce's I, I, in the South. Though I would tell people right. all the time, like okay. when when I was okay. like, what, first year high school, first year high school, what, eighty eight, bro, that was the most mind blowing time <laughs> of all time. Because, because 
during this time, this is the first time that kids that might come from a good family and everything, this is when you start seeing the project kids come to school and they got all velour shit. They matching tennis shoes. We like, yo, what the fuck they doing? You know, my mama still lay my shit out. Yeah. Like, why they, they got jogging suits looking like Run DMC, they shoe, man. And you was like, at the same time, they had money. So for me as a kid in Atlanta, I always understood the project life and the other side. Off top, you know what I mean? Like, I'm gonna go hang out in Dixie Hill, the Low Gardens. I'm gonna hang out in Decatur on Keller Road. It's, re it's real Atlanta talk, you're not from Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I just said, but see, it's the same. It's the, street, it's the, it's the, it's the same in New York, because Jimmy taught me, like, in New York, you got to go to Brooklyn. You got to go to Harlem, baby. You've got to go, and you got to see the different styles and what makes up the different boroughs. That's true. They all different, Definitely. and they all got their own language and codes. Mm. Facts. You see what I'm saying? You can tell who's from where. Only, yeah. only the old school gonna teach this, yeah. you know what I mean? So, being that you, you taught this, it's like, you know to go to the heroes in Queens and get your respect. But think about it, when all the gods were popping back then, nobody could say, we run New York. Nah. Yep. See what I'm saying? Only when the other folk and the politics and the money got involved to make everybody smaller, to make somebody bigger. But when we look at the essence of hip hop, every borough, nobody could say they were number one. We hip hop. That's a fact. That's and that's all I want. That's the reason why has, Atlanta has stayed so strong and everybody else to a certain degree has has not been able to stay as strong is because it's no other ethnicity in this city that can say they got something to do with our success. It's all blacks. Hey, man. Don't. Hey. It's easy to be that's how, that, that's how we should feel. <laughs> and, that, and, that's the, and that's the arrogance that some people carry. <laughs> in, in, in money and I got more than you. No, I carry that arrogance in knowing that we did this mm -hmm. and we got to keep it strong and nobody else's opinion matters. And no, I'm not going to kill him just because that make your business better. Mm. It's a place for T.I. and Lil John. Mm. Oh, Lil John from here too. That's a classic. Oh, it is. I forgot he from here. You know what I'm saying? Lil John ain't got to be the best rapper, but long Lil John do what he do. We nah, Lil John popping though. Yeah. Lil, Lil John, John popping. Come on, bro, old man. I've been out there. In I ain't Vegas gonna front. Standing. Lil John make you like you. You look at the biggest Southern DJs in Vegas. Lil John and Ruckus. Yeah. Ruckus from Miami. Mm -hmm. That's uh, Lenny Kravitz nephew, uh, cousin, Lil Cub. And you got Lil John. Yeah. You can't you can't get no bigger than them. So if you look at it, that's the spirit that I want hip hop to be on. That's the spirit that when we came in, everybody out here, like, don't tell me this era here is the best. Man, these folk been goddamn motherfucking copying each other for the last ten years, man. <laughs> that like, man go on with that bullshit, man. So like, what, what you think about this era though? Hey man, some of it's great, some of it's a prop. Okay. I'm just gonna be Ooh. honest. Hey man, anything that you can look in this industry and say it's the only thing like it, that's a prop. Mm. Mm. Hey, in my era, you had Kid Capri making album, Lil mm -hmm. John making album, F DJ, uh, uh, what? Yeah, uh, Flex. Yeah. Phone Flex. Yeah, yeah. You had, in this era, it's only been. <laughs> One one DJ can take it <laughs> for, the last, for the last two I mean, for the Khaled? True. Just yeah, one sure. DJ. That, that's what it be. That's, that's it. true though. Okay. Nah, that's it true. couldn't have been like that in the nineties. But that's because of money yeah, yeah, yeah. and hip hop yeah, yeah. real estate. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Nothing wrong with OG, nothing wrong with nothing. I'm just saying that the industry has come in and said, let's let's break this shit down, make one person popular at one thing and just run everything through that. Mm. But the consumer out here is like, okay, if you do that and I can see you doing that, then anybody can rap. Anybody can do it. And that's the reason why music right now is looked at as, it's not, they don't even want to pay for it because executives ain't <laughs> got into it. And this is the only industry that kicks out all the dudes that know how to do it. Ooh. So a person in a suit can act like that he knows. Wow. 
a person in a suit that don't even come from where you come from or tell you I ain't start listening to hip hop till I got to college. I couldn't listen to it in my mama house. But I listened to it in college. Now this same motherfucker telling you who hot and who not. Creating a list, top that's five, top. True. That's wild. Come on, right. man. Yeah, that's true, and though. All the dudes that in soul records, when I hear put artists out, they can't get a real job. Mm. We the only industry that kill the heroes. Ooh. So you can walk in right now and get a job at one of the, um, you know, they just killed the whole art. Ain't no artist development. You know why? You know what they doing? They killing that, and that what, the record companies are going to turn into tech companies. I just heard that. Right. So now I don't want no more Steve Stouts. I don't want no more Puffies. I don't want nobody that can claim some wow. of my credit. That's crazy. Wow. So let's cut out radio promotions. Mm -hmm. Wow. Relationships between. The, yeah. the, the, the label and the radio station, they cut all that out. Mm. So now nobody can say, I helped this artist be. Now it's shit. It's my money and that artist. That's it. Ain't no more talking to them folk about the history of the artists. Because now mm. I don't want nobody to have no credit but me. And the other part of that, it ain't even their money. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's wild. Let's need you to think about that. Mother tricking you out your life with somebody else's money. So that's the reason why when I look at what's going on right now, you destroy everything that you can't control, and now you just make it where it's only about one thing. And what do you have now? I mean, the substance is definitely definitely change you know but you saying? get mad and say you mad at the kids i just looked at this video two kids in new york who's the best rapper you like jay-z no he's ass oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I that. You that's the worst rapper. hey okay. Okay. <laughs> okay 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 why would he say that gibby because we know jay and trey we know dre we know jay smart we know everything we know jay a killer being the man but them kids they gonna look at it like Hey man, drill rap is what I've been seeing. Mm -hmm. That's true. You see what I'm saying? It ain't nothing that they've been promoting to me that's smart. So why should I even think anything that you tell me is smart? smart? That's why all these kids reject anything that we talk about. Because we put on them that since we say it's smart, they should think that. And they be like, mm mm, mm mm, I ain't doing that. <laughs> because it, I can say right now, Hey, them same kids. Well, do you like Kendrick? They might say Kendrick has. But that's because no, substance in they world is not celebrated. Yeah, it's different. We live in a different time with hip hop, man. I always, my. I break like, my neck to go see KRS one. Yeah, me too. You know what I mean? Because I know OG, even now, he can out rap half that's the folks. That's a fact. Because I know that the youngest don't read. OG ain't did number, regurgitate uh, some he read. And then, ooh, yeah, but you don't read, shawty. <laughs> Anything gonna be popping to you. So, <laughs> but then, <laughs> so you gotta just keep, you gotta look at what you're dealing with. Man, you know what I mean? Man, I you gotta look at what you're dealing with. You're dealing with. It is kind of deep, though. And then no. you, you turn right. around and you say, well, 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 why do these kids think that? Because you made dope dealing and being a hustler the greatest thing in hip hop. Mm -hmm. That's what you did. You made that to hear all about. So now the kids feel like they got to hustle, they got to sell drugs, they got to do everything to make it to be that. When Kara one didn't do that, Chuck D, I didn't learn that from that. I tell people all the time, Chuck D, I learned more from Chuck D than I learned from a lot of my history teachers. Wow. Because I heard. It's Long Island, baby. I heard, I heard. It's from Long Island. I, I, I heard Long the name Farrakhan from Chuck D. Work? I never heard oh, wow. Farrakhan until I heard Chuck D. Uh -huh. So when you just look at what Farrakhan did during that time, the Million Man March, we went to that shit, bro. Like we actually got a bus at the dungeon, got us two buses, everybody got on the bus and we went to the march. Wow, and we watched it. And we put a and we were like, man, the minister probably live up out of them up about means. Everybody put a dollar, put some in them boxes. So I look at those different type of events, even the Million Man March, we came out of that with a mindset like, it's time to make the second album. Let's go. 
We got it. You know what I mean? Those type of events is what made us like, okay, we like that. Then after we left there, the minister called us like, yo, we need y'all at the minister house because we trying to squash this, this east-west thing. We gonna have MAC-10 mm. and we gonna have MAC-10 Cube and, and, and Commons gonna come. We was at the minister house for that. Oh, when you talk about the east-west thing, um, obviously all of us know what happened. But well, you know what, let me not say that because a lot of the youngins don't know everything that happened. You was you was there when Tupac made the diss record with Biggie. Mm -hmm. um, just being there, I got I got I got to hear this. I got to hear the the energy. Um, okay, like, um, cause, cause this story is amazing, and this uh, is one of the dopest diss records of all time. Okay, Pac, um, we at the Lamontros in L.A. Sounds expensive. <laughs> That's where everybody used to stay. It sounds expensive. Yeah. So we get a call, we get a call, and they were like, yo, Pac in the studio, Pac wants y'all to come to the studio. Uh, I'm like, cool. Um, at this time, the war with uh, Bad Boy and all that is at a boiling point right now. It's at the highest. Yes, it, it, it's at the highest because um, uh, people been killed. Yeah. It's, it's, it's people been killed. It's different fights that went on that people don't know that's never been public. A lot of things didn't happen. So when we get to the studio, it was very dark. This death row was in war mode. You got dads are corrupt in one studio. You know what that's looking like. <laughs> Look like the ocean over there. And then, you know, you got Pac and uh, uh, his crew. And Pac was light that night. It was just him, the producer, and he had this girl with him. I remember uh, I noticed her because while, when I walked in the room, she was just standing in the corner with a long mink coat on. She didn't say nothing the whole time. She was just standing over there. But at the board with Pop, it was him and Lisa left that. Wow. So it was crazy. This night, he was like, yo, I want to let you hear something. I want to get y'all opinion on it. And I was like, shit, let's go. Lisa get up, she, she dip, she leaves. And he hit, he hit the button. Man. I think that uh, I sit there, I sit there and I was amazed at, uh, first of all, his passion. And Second of all, the way he felt like some people that he really felt like he was his friends had crossed him. Okay. You know? And this is after he got shot. It's after he got okay, shot. This is after he got shot at Quad. This, this is after okay. he, he came home yeah, and he, he was just time. fixated. Okay. He was just fixated. He was like, man, I'm fixated on that because. If this didn't have nothing to do with it, why didn't nobody try and help me or reach out when I was locked up up north? Okay. If you ain't had nothing to do with yeah. it, you could have been like, yo, man, you know, we been hanging out. And, was in, and he was in New York. Yeah, we yeah. been kicking it. We been okay. cool. And why when I get locked up, then nobody call me and say, man, we ain't had nothing to do with that. You know? And his thing was, this the only way I can get back at him. You mm. know what I mean? So when he play hit him up, I understood the first part, <laughs> <laughs> but when he said the thing about faith, I was kind of like, whoa, you know, because we kind of, all of us know each other. Yeah, so people. I was kind of like, you don't really lie about stuff like that. Back then, you know, it wasn't in the line of fabricating stories back then, so when you just said that one, it was like, ooh, like, whoa, like, that man wife, and I fucked you, wife. I'm just like, yo, I know that man. I know he don't lie like that. Mm. I know how Brawls is about him, because I ain't seen him in Atlanta, I ain't seen him in a lot of places. He do his numbers, he, he do, do his, his, I'm, his I'm, boy, I'm familiar with that. He like, he was like Nelly then. Yeah. <laughs> That was Nelly. That was, that was Nelly. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, it wasn't You know, so I'm just like, when he say this, I'm just like, you know, that's the that's the first part that kind of weighed heavy on me because I was just like, everything else just, you know, that's jabbing, you know, and that's 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 Jonah. But 
the part of that being put into it made it bigger than a diss song. It's, it's more personal. It was personal. You know what I mean? And I feel like out of all the diss songs, of all the songs that came out back then, the only one that had that kind of striking uh, uh, feeling when you first heard it was N.W.A. Fuck the Police. Yeah. Mm. That's yeah. how striking it was to me. Yeah. Like, <gasps> like, that man, that's it, your wife, man. Like, that shit, that shit gone past. <laughs> this shit real, you know? But they all knew. You know what I mean? This is the thing that's crazy for me is that the truth come out 30 years later. Mm. Yes, you around that gift. Show up. Yeah, <laughs> hey, you talking about in the middle of the night. Huh? Wow. Y'all seen we all seen it. We just didn't say nothing. Damn. And you gotta understand back then, remember now, things didn't travel fast. See, we waiting on the next issue of the source. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't no Instagram back Ain't then. Ain't no Instagram, it's nothing. So when he says this, you gotta understand what it does to just society like one of them like damn like you crossed him like that and y'all shot him like this motherfucker like we going to war for pop like golly but then on top of that if your wife crossed you like that with your that's, enemy yeah, whoa. That's, that's tough i can't take you back baby <laughs> <laughs> look look at me you know you know i'm me. not getting involved so that's so, tough though so for everybody to be out here lying and flying for 30 years nah that's and 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 and, 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 and you, you gotta you gotta look and say yeah, you gotta look and say man like i know jack too i know haitian wow oh wow okay. yeah i know the real new york he talked to give it give it no real new york yeah, yeah. that's why i guess yeah man wow like, nah I, i'm when listening certain, when certain people was on the street man all this talk wasn't like that uh-oh <laughs> Um, when certain people was on the street, all that, all that gang shit went like that. <laughs> so, for, for one that was rolling with the other side now, that shit went like that. Mm. Folk were a little scared. They were a little worried when folk walking these streets. They was, so, so they frightened? So, a lot of folk, it's just that you know who to play with and who not to. Okay, okay, okay. You know what I mean? Some of this shit Hollywood. Some of this shit, the street folk in New York know who the street folks is. And we know who the Hollywood is. You know what I mean? So, with that being said, when that happened, I was just like, you gonna put this out? Like, me, I'm shooting the video this week. Wow. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was like, yeah, there. I was like, you about to shoot a video. You know, I'm thinking this gonna stay on some street shit, Yo. some tape shit. And he said, I'm going to shoot a video on this. Did you tell him, don't put, did you, did, was you like, yo, Pac, I ain't going to lie, yo, this is too, I, bro, yo, don't, I don't do it, son. I, I was just like, yo. Don't do it, don't do it. This shit heavy here, boy. This shit heavy. But you got to understand who he's sitting at the boy with. He's sitting with the gangster, the, 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 the twin of his. Lisa left eye. So she got the battery in his back. Oh, Philadelphia. Man. Oh, yeah. She's like, baby, do what you got to do. <laughs> do what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm for real. Women always listen. I'm, I'm talking about with a tall can. A, ta a tall can. A tall can of OE. Oh, my oh. God. When we, we when we walk in the room, they already tall canning. Mm. You know what I mean? They already drinking. He, he, getting, he just waiting for us to come in so we, he can play the song. So when he play the song and say, she leave. And then he tell me, I'm doing a video. Wow. So I'm just like, whoa, like. Wow. I don't know, bro. We lead there with another respect for Pop. But we also lead that knowing that you can't put this energy out here and then not come back. Mm. Talk that. You see what I'm saying? So. Pac seemed like he didn't care though. He didn't was he, care. Was he like that? Because I wasn't there. Was he, like, was he like the type of person that's just like, you know what? It is what it is, yo. He didn't care because he knew who people really was mm. on both sides. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Like, 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 I was out there with, with, I started as a roadie. So if you was around that time and you wasn't that, I know you wasn't that. What's a roadie? He know the roadies. He used, he used to, oh. he used to care. Okay, the roadies back in the day used to get the bags, take the bags to the bus and stuff like that, you know. So that's how Pac got his opportunity to rap. 
in the Bay. That's how he 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 was like, let me get around um, OG. Shock Gina. Shock Gina. Digital Underground. Digital Underground. Let me get around them, be roadie, and get and, and make my way. So you got to understand that outside of Shock D, uh, Shock G, another person that really took hold of Pac and and, and took care of Pac was Scarface. Mm. A word? Yes. I never knew this. Yes, bro. Scarface. Scarface is is who who really took Pac under his wing in the South in Texas, cause really back then. Texas and California was really like our bridge to California music. Like I can tell y'all like, like in 80, 85, 86, you know, that was my first time going to, my family had moved to Denver, Colorado. And uh, my cousins, they were bloods. So me being around them and that culture, that was the first time I was really around gang culture that you know, everybody around here into that. You know, I'm mm -hmm. from Atlanta, ain't nobody know goddamn what the hell. <laughs> so, so, so I get I get up here for the summertime, and you know, cuz them getting up, they iron and they got them dickies, and I'm looking at this, I ain't a dickies in a t-shirt. Who iron dickies in a t-shirt, my nigga, that shit, that's work clothes, where I'm from, you know what I mean? So I'm watching these folks, and that's what, he introduced me to these shoes called Cortez. I'm just like, oh. The Cortez Classics. Cortez, okay. He said, you know what those are? These, these mm -hmm. were the Forrest Gump said, joints. Yeah, he said, Okay, okay. He <laughs> was like, these, 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 these were, these, these were gangbangers. Yeah. Were. This is what we wear. Okay. This is our uniform. In the front. You know what I mean? This is when I'm learning the, the different things. So I'm, I'm in middle school, right? The first rap record I ever bought that I thought was rap, that I got a chance to go to the record store and buy out of town was Herbie Hancock. They was playing this record, right? So I was like, okay, I'm listening. Da, da, da. I'm listening to Herbie. And they was like, Man, cut that shit off, man. What that is? I was like, I heard it hand cut. They were like, man, we don't listen to that. We listen to this. Two short freaky tales. Ooh. First time I ever heard this record. I got that, that had to be interesting to hear two short. Uh, like, I'm talking about this a like, kid. I sit here listening to him. Yeah, rap, man. Like, this nigga here rapping for 30 minutes. <laughs> 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 like, like Bull just told this thing. I ain't never heard nobody rap like this. Like, this is amazing. So we went from that to E-40 and the click. This is the first time I'm hearing E-40. This is the summer of 86, 87. Damn. So this is the first time I'm even getting introduced to this Bay music. Cause I've only at this point, only really heard N.W.A. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So I come back home and I'm psyched out on this West Coast music. Because we had only heard like LA music, you know what I mean? So this is this new music from the Bay. So we really didn't start hearing the Bay to almost 90. Wow. You know what I mean? When I brought it back and I was like, wow, like this is the Bay music. This is LA music. This is Texas music. This is New York music. Like I could really, really, really tell the difference at the same time, I can say this, none of it mattered more to me than Two Live Crew. A word? None matched my life and my lifestyle more than Two Live Crew. To me, nothing was bigger than Lou Skywalker. To me, Lou Skywalker was our Russell Simmons. Shout out to Luke, man. You know, because Luke and what he did was totally against what hip hop stood on at that time. He was going at it from the club place where hip hop was entrenched in just hip hop and our culture at that time. And I think people didn't really understand the strip club culture until they came to Atlanta and started going to Miami. And that was, uh, how can I be down? Okay. I think that's when New York really started saying, okay, this is Miami, this is y'all flavor, okay. All right, that's when Fab Five Freddy really started hanging out in Miami. Him and Luke got a relationship, and I think that's when the relationship between New York and Miami really started. Uh, that How Can I Be Down conference, man, that did it. Okay, okay, okay. That, that, they, gave us, they gave us a clear perspective that it's six, seven different coasts 
and all of it represents a different sound. Because we recognize Sir Mix a lot as being one of the greats too. But a lot of people don't speak on Sir Mix a lot. Where's Sir, where he's, where's Sir Mix a lot from? He's from Seattle. Baby got back, he's still getting paid from that. It made him a millionaire. Yo. <laughs> what? I'm serious. I, I'm not doubting you. He's I still mean, getting paid for Baby Got Back. I mean, like, I, I, I think, and that's why I think our um, interpretation of what hip hop is is going to be always so different because we always looked at everybody as the same. Like, to me, still nobody's come out of the New York or the South that's did what MC Hammer did. MC Hammer is what commercialized hip hop. Okay. He is the first that had a fucking Taco Bell commercial for <laughs> the Super Bowl. I had never seen a rapper with big old pants on on the Super Bowl with Taco Bell. MC Hammer was tough though. I ain't gonna front. Hey, I ain't gonna front. Like I, I got, yo, I gotta give MC Hammer his props. Too legit to quit was crazy. Too legit to quit was crazy. That that some of the earliest stuff when he was wearing the troop outfits. Yeah, it man. Was, it was just crazy. I just look at I look at hip hop as one thing. Because to me personally, like, to me, Wu-Tang has created more styles in the new world than a lot of people give them credit for. I can see that. The Purple Tape was a fucking masterpiece. <sighs> oh, my God. Shout out to Ray. Yeah, Ray, Purple uh, Tape was uh, crazy. Uh, to me, Ghostface has always been the most entertaining New York rapper that I've <laughs> ever seen. <laughs> I'm saying... His style. Yeah, he's, he fly. Like, bro, yeah, when you fly. go and do a gold bracelet yeah. with a guy. With, with the eagle. <laughs> <laughs> and he, and he had on. the bathrobe on. Yo, Ghostface one of the illest, though. Man. Come on, bro, man. That man put fur on the goddamn <laughs> house coat, man. Like, yeah, man. No, man. Like, that's what I mean. That's what was so great about that time, because everybody wanted to be different. Mm -hmm. Everybody, like, to me, I got to see Old Dirty when he came home. Wow. I, when I went and recorded for, Wh for RZA's first solo album, Old Dirty, it was just a number me, him, and Old Dirty at the studio. That's when Dirty first came home. Damn. A Dirty fuck with Gibby. He wild like me. <laughs> <laughs> see, dirty, Old Dirt fuck with Gibby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gibby, the Old Dirt like Gibby wild. He was, he be wild yeah. was he Was he wild though? Yeah, man. Dirt <laughs> wild, man. Dirt didn't give a fuck about none of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what made him great though. Like, like, cause nobody could beat that. T man, when they put him on MTV and he showed that, that EBT card, oh, yeah. man, that shit was just so hip hop. That was yeah. just like, You remember hey, that? Man. Oh my God. Bro, that was just so hip hop. And I just feel like those times when we was doing it for just being natural and just being us. And once them people got involved and started twisting it and making it, making it go a certain way instead of letting it be organic. I think the system and hip hop has been guided ever since they've been able to get into that Grammy shit. Mm -hmm. Hip hop has been controlled. Do you um? Well, Killer Mike winning the Grammy this year. Um, and like I was saying earlier, you or you make it like Atlanta has won. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I know that Killer Mike. The things that he's standing on, the things that he's speaking on, the things that he represents is the best of us. And from my experience in hip hop, hip hop doesn't congratulate the best of us. Mm. They Ooh. like to congratulate the, be the worst of us. Mm. Oh. You know? Okay. And, uh, That's deep. I think when you look at, when you just look at the, what they've done to certain people in front of your face and you just disregard it. But it's because it's so normal that you disregard it. But you know, like, when, when Public Enemy had to separate from, Profe from Professor Griff, I paid attention to that moment in time. And the same thing that Professor Griff said then is the same thing that was said not too long from now, not, not, I mean, to me, the same information that was said then that made that group part is the same information that they never want us to make popular. And that's just the truth, you know. Um, 
And that's because we don't run things, you know. And I could just tell people a lot of times that the only reason why we don't run things is because we didn't put our money up. So when you look at people like Master P or J Prince or Luke, why, why, why does history smear them when they do it with their own money and their own way, but then when it's done and it's backed by somebody, then it's the greatest thing of all time. And I think that's the reason why Atlanta, anytime any, of, any one of us win, they needed Killer Mike to win this year. Mm -hmm. If Killer Mike didn't win this year, hip hop was over. Ooh. Mm. If Killer Mike didn't win this year, hip hop was over. Because when Ooh. you're playing wow. drill music in New wow. York, something wrong. Mm. Wow. Not mm. for the, the Mecca should not be doing this. So why, what, where, where the OG said, no, we not having that. Yeah, we ain't, we ain't messing with that. You see what I'm saying? He's up. Like, that's what you gonna get from us. We gonna, we gonna police ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because cause even when shit got too bad amongst even some of us, we gonna get involved. And, hey man, chill out with that. That shit make everybody look bad. What we not gonna do is stop the money. Hey, that's the same conversation could have been had in LA. Let me tell you something, people. Black Hollywood died the night Biggie Smalls died. Mm. Now, all you gotta do is check this. When Biggie got killed that night in Hollywood, after that, L.A. went dark for two or three years. Black Hollywood destroyed. Anybody who was a prominent director that was in rap, they took them up to movies and commercials. Rap as a scene in L.A. died. Black Hollywood as a scene in L.A. died. Is that because you think people were afraid? It's over now. Okay. Biggie was a part of the new thing in L.A. Biggie was on Martin. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. He okay. represented the new. Yeah. You killed Biggie in, New in L.A. Everything went black. That's tough. If you go back and look at them years, after Biggie died, no more boys in the hood, no more ministers to society, no more nothing. There was black about their culture. Mm. It stopped. They stopped investing. The emergence of Atlanta. They moved the money. So now you got to look at what's going on right now in LA. You can't get on the radio unless you got a top 40 record. <clears throat> they don't even make top 40 music. <laughs> <laughs> as a culture. Did the music that bad right now get me? <laughs> no, as a culture. Yeah, I'm just, yo. They even make top 40. Think about it. Kendrick is an anomaly. Yeah. Kendrick's so nice. He's so nice. You know what I mean? So so I, t I take it like this. Y'all remember in our day, we could stand in the club and we could all see the stars. You know what I mean? We could all see the stars. Right now, the three biggest, two of the biggest artists I think in the game is Kendrick and J. Cole. But if they in a room we got them, Drake and motherfucking Future, they ain't even looking over there. They ain't even looking over there. They, they everybody over there. That's just the game. But in our time, we could be in here with LL Cool J, KRL One. Boy, let me tell you. Thank you so much, LL Cool J, for putting Goody Mob on tour with you last year. I got to watch LL perform for two hours straight. And I got to watch one of my superheroes walk to the stage every night. And he is everything that I say he is. That's Rock Hill. Hey, from the neighborhood. You talking about you talking about a cool mm -hmm. you talking about a cool and you talking about a man that you know ain't nothing gonna break what he here for and how he gonna do it. Don't matter the money, I ain't here for the money, I'm here for the art. Man, just being able to watch him rock and LA rock every night. That's that. That's the beauty that I see, and that's that's the love. Of, that's the New York I fell in love with. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like about two months ago, 
Grandmaster, uh, the Grandmaster was here, and of course he called KRS One up here, so I got to see both of them here in the studio together. And I was just like, man, like KRS One still is the epitome of what we supposed to be. That's a fact. You know what I mean? He's just the epitome of what we supposed to be and what we supposed to, how we supposed to stand on the art. And I just feel like uh, so many of us lost that, man. So many of us lost that. You know, when this shit became about money and power and, and controlling people. And I just think that it was just so much fun. It was it was so much funner when everybody was doing it out of the love and not feeling like, you know, I want the bag to do it or it don't matter. And, you know, and I think that's the one thing that the Internet has done, has taken the... Uh, the love out of it, and it's more about the money. But if you think about it, that's the reason why these, this music don't stay around, because mm -hmm. of the intent that it's made in. Mm. Do you feel like, even it's, with all the hip-hop stuff going on now, did you see about the recent thing with Kendrick and um, J. Cole? Mm-hmm. What do you think about that? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I look at it like that's a good one. You know what I mean? It's a good one. I feel like uh, I know what Kendrick capable of. Uh, I love Country Boy J. Cole because in my mind, like when I look at them, I look at that era, that era of, of rap, I look at Kendrick like an outcast and J. Cole like a goodie mom. So, for me personally, I'm like, uh, lyrically, this should be a great, a great contest. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, it's it's just hard to see how far to go, because lyrically, uh, those two, they, they're very, uh, they got a big vocabulary. So, you know, it's it's, it's going to be about who strike, who strike first. Because I mean, I ain't I gonna tell you. I ain't gonna tell you no lie. Like, like lyrical action. I never, I, I never action. thought, yeah. I never thought Drake was as good as he was till they, till they bothered him. Like, <laughs> he, 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 he got some bodies. Oh, you, you, you thought he was more laid back? Like, they, they pulled it out of him and a little bit. They, until they attacked him. Okay. And then he came back and seen like everybody who dissed him. He already was ready. Yeah. So to me, that at least let me know like, oh. At least you play that game. See, okay, okay, okay. I'm, th 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 this is where we differ. In the dungeon, Reek them didn't allow no battling. We don't. Y'all didn't battle none. Y'all didn't battle don't nobody. Battle each other. That okay. Was, that's rule number one. No, we here to get better. This is the school of arts. You learn from those around you. You don't battle no one around you. That's the that's the rule of the dungeon. That's why every style in the dungeon was somebody who created that style, mm. you know. Because I remember it was funny one time. Uh, it was when Benny Benny Siegel them first started coming to Atlanta, <laughs> and they was at uh they was at this club, and I remember Benny he was outside in the parking lot. You know they were doing their thing. Yeah. They were like, "Where's CeeLo? And I want to battle CeeLo." I was like. <laughs> 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 No. He's like, you don't want that problem? No. <laughs> we don't do that. Like, yeah. I love you, but we don't we don't do that, man. Like, <laughs> and it tripped him out because he was like, that's gangster. Like, like Benny was like, that's gangster. Y'all don't battle kid. I thought y'all did. And I was like, bro, we don't do that, bro. <laughs> like, if we battle, we gon' it, it's gonna we're gonna turn into something. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's like all that joning and going on. I don't, we don't really play them games, you know what I mean? So that's why I say right now, man, hip hop is turned into the reason why I feel like it's where it's at is because you got a lot of uh, people that can portray and be things they not. Where in those times, bro, you could only know what was going on unless you was in the clubs, mm. unless you was in the streets. You couldn't look at the game from the house. And I think that's why you got so, I say in this era, it's more fans making the music than artists. Oh. Damn, that hit me and I ain't even rapping. <laughs> Yo, 
It's more fans making the music than the artists. Sure. Oh. Uh, Q-Tip would be the president of Atlantic right now. Man. Q-Tip legend. Wow. I'm saying if you want New York to stay around, you're going to put the architects in the position to make sure that the, the culture stays intact. Mm. But if you put Buddy them went to Yale somewhere, yeah. like he don't know he don't, that. He don't, yeah, he don't understand the culture, man. Time, I was looking on the Instagram. I told the young I said, do you know how they sign artists now? He said, what? First thing they ask you about is some fake ass numbers on a goddamn app. What's your TikTok looking like? What kind of shit it is? Nigga said, what? Yeah, I'm just talking about that. What's your, like, TikTok? What's your TikTok numbers here, man? What's your Instagram following looking like? Real. That's how y'all signing people? Yeah. Oh my God. We in trouble. <laughs> 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 so, that's the reason why I say we need the L.A. Reeds. Word. We need the ones that they don't like to stay in power. Because the ones they don't like, because they can't control them. That's a fact. And the ones that you see that's in power, those are the ones they control. Mm. Mm. Yo, man. <laughs> Give, I don't even know. I don't know what they even say, man. <laughs> we here in Atlanta. This episode has been iconic. I knew it was going to be like this. A lot of hip-hop history, a lot of Atlanta history, a lot of universal history. My God, I just want to give you flowers. We appreciate you. This is dope. And you, this, 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 this episode meant a lot to me because I'm a big, big fan. I was telling everyone today, I was like, yo, I'm really about to go interview Kip. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I know, I, like, I, was, I wasn't I was in Atlanta at the time, but I was in New York at the time listening to y'all music. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So for me... This means a lot. I'm, I appreciate you. Thank you for your time, man. And, and that's I, that's what it is. I want to let up. you know too, man. And I want to let New York know. New York, I love you to death. I oh, love the culture. I love I love the culture. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this shit. Yeah. How you get? That was the best. Uh, look at this shit. <laughs> that nigga's trying to stop me. <laughs> look, as soon as you give New York love, look, look. somebody come in like, nah. Look, man, like, my thing is this. I love New York with everything I got. New York, if it weren't for New York, I would have no career. I would have no life. Ooh. Because I didn't want to work for nobody every day of my life. Mm. Because of hip hop, I ain't had no job since I was 19 years old. Wow. You know what I mean? I, I have lived and my talent has taken me all over the world because of hip hop and it's because of the greats. You know what I mean? Like, there is no me without Run DMC, Beastie mm. Boys, KRS One, Biz Markey, Chuck D. Like, it, it, there, there is no us. I just want you to always understand that I have lived only in the presence of what you look like. I've never been taught to bow to nothing. For money, what community they from, or nothing. I only always want us to see that we don't need nobody but us Ooh. to win and keep it right. Atlanta is an example of what we can be everywhere if we start messing with each other like we do here in Atlanta. New York is the most powerful city in the United States because y'all got five cities right there. That's a fact. So my thing is to New York is that where we had differed at is that when we came in during the 90s, we seen a lot of, of our peers not messing with the OGs of New York. like. You know, they old, they ain't it no more. This ain't it, we the shit. And we vowed not to do that. We vowed. So that's why you see, from the youngest to the oldest, Atlanta gonna respect each other. Cause we in need of each other. And there's no younger artist can say, Gip them rejected me. I never wanted younger artists to say, I ain't helped them. And I think that 
if you look at what's going on in New York right now, New York getting back together, where they fucking mm -hmm. with each other again. Mm -hmm. That's how it was in the 90s, you know what I mean? And I think that when New York start displaying what New York looked like to me on B Street, and shit like that. B Street. That's what that, that's what made New York the coolest yeah, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Looking at movies like that, bro, like, I wanted a sheepskin. I couldn't find one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So those kind of things and those kind of cultural things that I got from the movies and going to the city, that's what I wanted to see. That's what I always want to see. But I look at it like this. All of us got to also understand that it's a cultural war going on. If these people are removing all our heroes that have helped us all become stars and all that, if they removing all our heroes, then why are we going to follow the same? If you helping them kill your city and your culture, then you ain't doing your city and your culture no justice. You know, standing together is the most powerful thing you can have. So for me, even when it come to LA, hey man, y'all gotta get away from the gang culture. The gang culture we all know is the dead end. It's a dead end. It's no money in it. It's cool to be attached to your neighborhood, but you have to be something in the real world. If your gang name is bigger than your real name, you have did yourself a disservice. Mm. And that's really, that's how I live my life, bro. And Goody Ma, we'll be here. Gibby, Gibby gonna be here. I don't want nothing out of the game. They can have their trophies and everything. I just wanted to survive the game. I ain't in the trophies. I'm just in the life. I'll see y'all soon. That's what it is. <laughs> Anything you wanna say, Fancy? Thank you so much for your time. It's really been an honor and a privilege. And I would like to know, is there anything in the works? What's next for Goody Ma and what can the fans be expecting? Um, what's next for Gip? Uh, I'm in a new TV show called On 10 with Man Robinson. I'm doing uh, TV shows and movies. Uh, I got a new record out right now. I got a new record out with me and James Worthy. We signed the Chaos, one of the members of uh, PM Dunn. So I'm signing Ooh. his label. Me and James Worthy putting our album out on that. You can go on YouTube right now and pull up Gip and James Worthy. We put out a five piece thing that we did last year yeah. and we got signed to Sony this year. So we, we're going to drop the new album for that this summer. Um, uh, you uh, come for the, the Rock the Bells cruise. Goody Ma will be on the Rock the Bells cruise. We're doing the Bahamas and Jamaica. Oh, come on, so y'all better come on. We're doing two shows on the water. Mm -hmm. That'll be the show. So I see y'all on Rock the Bells oh tour God. with the OG LL. And, uh, Hey man, I'ma just stay consistent and stay out the way. I see y'all soon. Y'all know what it is. Subscribe, like, share. We in Atlanta. Hey yo, we up out of here. Say we're a podcast. Stay tuned. The fastest growing podcast up in the world right now. You know. Say word. Only fans, real estate, talking in fashion. Let them know what's happening.